And uh, again, the, the crew emblem designed by, by Bob McCall. The breakfast, in this case, was a lunch. And of course, the crew members again, the pilot, Charlie Precourt, Nikolai Buterin, who's uh, aboard the Mir still, uh, the Mir 19 commander, Anatoly Solovyev, uh, Hoot Gibson, of course, our payload commander, Ellen Baker, and Dr. Bonnie Dunbar and Greg Harbaugh. Uh, we walked out at uh, oh, early afternoon. This was a whole lot nicer day to be walking out to the orbiter than the previous mm -hmm. attempt had been uh, when they had to actually put the crew van under the awning because the rain was coming down too hard. And so we had to make a, uh, a quick ingress into the, into the vehicle. There's a good shot of Hoot uh, when we finally got the go for launch. Uh, two minutes, visors down, pseudo two on, and have a good flight. We were off and running. Uh, most folks uh, maybe don't realize that rendezvous started right here. We had a five minute launch window, and uh, we had to wait for the moment in time when Mir's orbit uh, was right directly overhead of us, and we could insert ourselves into the same plane that they were in. Uh, and uh, we hit that uh, right on time. On this particular day, the weather cooperated, and uh, it was a magnificent launch. Uh, Anatoly and Nick uh, were very impressed with the, the vehicle, uh, and we were off and running with a great start here. Okay, once we got on orbit, we had uh, an awful lot of work to do to get ready for the rendezvous. Uh, we opened the payload bay doors. You can see the docking mechanism sitting there with the six uh, black dots on the the forward end of it. Uh, we had just a tremendous amount of activity at the end of flight day one and then all of flight day two getting our computers ready to go, uh, getting our rendezvous tools set up. We had one or two unexpected events uh, including uh, a little work that had to be done on the handheld laser but we got ready to go in time. We flew an intercept on the mirror that had us uh, pick up the radius vector or essentially come in right underneath the mirror and fly up below them all the way into docking. Uh, this was a pretty intensive period as uh, Bonnie and Greg have alluded to on the flight deck uh, with the, uh, uh, the three of us flying and everyone else helping as we come in. This is a shot uh, that you saw earlier from the, from the mirror of the orbiter over the Red Sea. We had a very narrow corridor that we had to intercept and fly up so as not to disturb any of the solar arrays on the mirror with our plumes. And as we got into about 500 feet or so, the mirror started its maneuver to the final attitude for docking. And as it did that, we were able to start locking on with the TCS laser system uh, because on the end of the docking module were the reflectors that that system could lock onto. So I'm coordinating that activity here with the ground controllers. And you'll see a shot here briefly of uh, that final maneuver, you can see the docking node uh, in the center there starting to come more in alignment with our axis, and you can also see the, the relative motion of the solar arrays in this particular view. And uh, we uh, were pretty much at the end of this event when the mirror was in attitude. We were ready to go on with it. As, as Ben had alluded, it was a very bu busy time. Uh, we had, again, several calls going back and forth between the mirror and, and the shuttle as uh, docking occurred. We borrowed a little bit of video uh, from the, uh, the Mir 18 crew on that sequence. As you may recall, we moved into 30 feet and held for five minutes waiting for the timing to get exactly right. Uh, it was our objective in the course of the rendezvous not to have to fire any braking pulses towards the Mir and we were able to work the, uh, the timeliness, the closure rates and the distances such that that worked out just fine. We were able to utilize natural orbital braking uh, to bring us all the way into docking and never did have to fire a braking pulse all the way in. Uh, this is the actual moment of docking as seen from the aft flight deck uh, from the one of the payload bay cameras looking out. And this is a shot that came down to the ground that showed both the centerline camera view as well as the view out the, uh, out the aft flight deck. Uh, as you probably recall, we had a very tight window on the actual docking. Well, this was the hard part. We had six people with cameras on one side of the hatch and <laughs> two people with cameras on the other side of the hatch. And, uh, of course, everybody wanted to get a good picture. Uh, we had a variety of different cameras, stills, videos, IMAX, uh, you name it, we had it. Uh, we didn't want to miss the hatch opening and the handshake, and you'll see we're flashing uh, lights in each other's faces here. 
but it was an awfully exciting time and we just couldn't wait to get that hatch open and, and greet our comrades. We had been training and preparing for this moment for so long uh, over the preceding year, uh, working together with the MIR-18 and the MIR-19 crews. Uh, when the actual moment came, we found ourselves looking around and saying, are we really here and if we really, have we really made this work? We had just a very brief greeting and a very brief uh, ceremony, if you will, at the actual hatch. Uh, and of course, this was the first time that we had seen Norm and Volodya and Gennady, uh, I guess in the previous, what, eight months, I guess it had been since we had seen them. And of course, going a little out of plan, uh, uh, we had we had a plan prior to this, and uh, first thing we did was take that plan and toss it, and we all uh, <laughs> lined up and uh, and uh, went into the mirror at that time. All all ten of us, I guess, were in there at that time, and uh, I kept the camera running as we uh, went through the crystal module and uh, arrived in the base block where we did our uh, welcoming ceremony, I think. So there we were all uh, accumulating ourselves in the base block or the core module, uh, obviously elated, really happy to see uh, uh, Gennady and Volodya and Norm, and they were, I think, happy to see us. Uh, I think it's the first time there have been 10 human beings in one spacecraft, and uh, to uh, commemorate the occasion, Bonnie put a STS-71 crew patch up on one of their uh, comm um, pieces of equipment. The following day then we uh, congregated back in the space lab and we performed a gift exchange and we also mated a model of the Mir space station uh, with the uh, space shuttle. A little bit of drift. <laughs> uh, there's also a tour of the space shuttle that was conducted for Russian audiences. Uh, Norm did this, and in these sequences, he's taking Gennady around the shuttle, and he'll later narrate this for a Russian audience, first uh, in the commander's seat and now back in the aft flight deck uh, where Charlie is showing him the controls for the docking adapter. So once we got all the PAO events out of the way, we could get to work on some of the science objectives of the, of the flight. and. Uh, the day after docking, we did start on some of the experiments. We had a small series of experiments to do on this flight that looked primarily at the cardiovascular system, uh, exercise, fitness, uh, endurance, those sorts of things, and also some metabolic studies to look at biochemical, hormonal changes in the blood, changes in the blood chemistry, things like that. And uh, Bonnie and I orchestrated most of this. Uh, couldn't have done it, obviously, without our subject's participation and full cooperation. And uh, it was a pretty long day. As Ellen mentioned, we had, uh, had rehearsed this before and with our uh, Payload Operations Control Center down here on the ground, the POC, uh, it all went as planned. Uh, as uh, was previously men mentioned, uh, we performed several barrel experiments on all three of the subjects. Got some excellent quality data. We're very happy with it. Uh, Ellen also performed a number of metabolic experiments called MGAF. Here she's connecting up a rebreathing uh, bag uh, to Volodya. And uh, we also flew the lower body negative pressure device as a joint experiment between the Russians and the Americans. We had principal investigators from both countries on all of our studies. Uh, the Russians use lower body negative pressure as a countermeasure. We use it as a research tool, and we used it as a little of both on this flight. Greg is wincing because uh, he's having his blood taken there, and he'd rather be jogging like I am here, I think. <laughs> it didn't really hurt. <laughs> okay, we, as uh, mentioned earlier, we did an awful lot of transferring of equipment, uh, scientific and uh, materiel. Here, Hoot is transferring something called the PCG, <clears throat> and it's just uh, one example of the, the uh, tremendous amount of effort we put into those five dock days and moving stuff back and forth between the two vehicles. Uh, one unsung um, 
tremendous capability of the shuttle is its ability to return hardware back to Earth, and uh, we took full advantage of it on this flight. Uh, one of the more pleasant things we had the opportunity to do is talk to school kids around the world. We had uh, SARX contacts in California, Texas, New Jersey, Massachusetts, and over in Russia. We used the SARX radios on board both the station Mir and uh, the shuttle. And as we showed in our slide, one of the big moments for us was to be able to uh, show the new rockets emblem and present the shirt to uh, Anatoly, uh, who promptly put it on and decided to demonstrate his uh, <laughs> basketball style, which I'm sure that is the envy of anyone who's been in zero G. <laughs> Here we are closing the hatch, and uh, we've already said our last goodbye there. Um, and then uh, there's Anatoly saying goodbye to us, eating a tortilla through the <laughs> one of the viewports on Kvant. Or crystal, I guess that is. Uh, Greg and Bonnie were talking there about getting pressure checks done as we prepared for this moment. Uh, the Soyuz undocks from the mirror on the opposite end of the station and begins its fly around. Uh, we watched it with amazement at uh, how well controlled it was and how stable. And Ellen's in the process of snapping it on the IMAX here, which uh, came out quite well. We got to review that the other day. But Anatoly flew out of plane here, as you see him moving between the panels to a position about uh, 60, 80 meters uh, to the commander's side of the orbiter, I guess the port side, and uh, station kept there while we prepared to do our undocking. These scenes make the uh, Soyuz look pretty small and look pretty far away. Let me tell you how close he looked when he was sitting out there. His, uh, I guess he had a laser rangefinder, and you can see some of the jet firings here as he was holding attitude. Uh, just right out the window. We felt like we could reach out and touch him uh, because he was that close to us. His range, I think, was about 65 meters, uh, but again, he looked very, very close uh, at the, uh, at the, as the actual time for undocking approached. At about uh, three minutes prior to the actual separation, I sent a command to open the hooks and everything worked just like clockwork. That mechanism worked superbly. And there was a set of push-off springs that separated the two vehicles initially, and then at about two feet, who'd initiated a, a separation maneuver, four pulses, to complete the uh, set sequence. This is a view, I guess, from the Soyuz, looking at us as we do that undocking. Of course, when we finally separated, uh, the Mir-18 crew came up waved goodbye. We had some exchanges uh, on the VHF radio as well as we said sayonara. Uh, you're also seeing on the left there the Soyuz redocking. It was uh, uh, a little departure from our plan to uh, dock uh, an orbit later, but uh, you can just see it start to close in there. Anatoly did an excellent job. He, uh, I was in the commander's seat and he flew from the uh, port side to the starboard side of the vehicle and did a very smooth redocking. Uh, as we com uh, completed that part of the, the fly around and got the photo there, we started a complete uh, revolution around the mirror and got these real pretty views of uh, the station. And here you can see it uh, rotating. Uh, the uh, folks on the ground were very interested to see views of the different sides of the mirror to see what kind of condition it's been in after a long exposure to space. As Charlie mentioned, we flew all the way around the mirror uh, doing more than a 360 degree fly around and uh, finally got to a point overhead the mirror on what we call the minus R bar and did our final separation burn and started translating away uh, from the mirror space station. Well, <clears throat> shortly after that we continued our work in the lab. Uh, of course, one of the things that would be important for Norm and his crew members to do is to maintain their conditioning and anticipation of entry. Uh, the intent was to exercise twice a day. I think we missed that a few times for, for those guys, but they did manage to get some of their exercise in. And another modification we did was to use the recumbent seats of the shuttle uh, so that they would have the gravity vector going through the chest rather than from the head to the toes and make the G-forces of re-entry a lot easier on them. 
This, of course, shows the shuttle as we uh, re-entered, flew around the hack, and uh, came down final approach. Uh, the uh, one little surprise we got on final was a master alarm, which proved to be a false sensor indication, but uh, it, uh, we just pressed right on. At uh, 300 feet, I lowered the gear here, and uh, Hoot set up on the outer glide path just nice and solid and brought it on in. We were a relatively lightweight orbiter, about 219,000 pounds uh, coming in for landing, so we were shooting at a 195 knot touchdown. Uh, as opposed to the heavyweight flights where we shoot at 205 knots. And this is us touching down on runway 15 uh, at the Kennedy Space Center on uh, July the 7th, uh, ending a, a very successful 10-day flight. We, of course, used the drag chute. We had a normal drag chute deploy. Uh, for this landing, we had a little bit of crosswind, not enough to cause us any real difficulty, and uh, we're able to fly a normal approach and landing all the way through the uh, drag chute deployment and drag chute jettison that you see here. <laughs> 